From a hot dog vendor to a founder of a billion dollar business, Taco Bell. Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Our topic for today is how a hot dog vendor became the creator of the massive restaurant chain Taco Bell, a $3 billion company. It is a Mexican style American fast food restaurant chain originating from Downey, California. The journey of this billion dollar enterprise began in 1946 when veteran Glenn Bell, who served as a cook in the U.S. Marine Corps during World War II, opened up a hot dog stand in San Bernardino, California. Glenn Bell was born in Linwood, California on September 3, 1923, the sixth child of Glenn and Ruth Johnson Bell. At the age of 12, his family moved to a small farm outside San Bernardino. When the family faced hard times, Glenn, then 16, was forced to live on the street and ride the rails in search of work. In 1941, Glenn started helping his great-aunt Mary with her small bakery in Washington. Glenn's days at the bakery started his journey for the passion for food. In 1943, he served as a Marine in the Pacific. After the war, since the miniature golf course he leased made no money, Bell bought a surplus army truck and began picking bricks for five cents each. Having always wanted to work in the food business, Bell just so happened to be in the McDonald's Brothers' new drive-in restaurant concept when he came up with the idea of offering customers a window that offered them food. At 23, he decided to open a hot dog stand in a Hispanic neighborhood after getting tired of working in a local gas company. Since Bell did not have enough money to start a new business, he decided to sell his sister's refrigerator for $400 and use the money to secure a lease for the food stand site and to buy building materials. Initially, she was not happy with her brother's decision, but later, when she saw how much money they were making, she cooled off. Later that year, Bell opened the doors of Bell's Drive-In for the business of selling hot dogs and was confident that the post-war economy would support it. Bell began as a decent one-man operation serving only takeout food. During his first 16-hour day as a business owner, he made $20. Bell remembered the reaction of his first customer. Clad in a suit, had taco juice dripping down his sleeve and his tie, to which Bell thought, uh-oh, I've lost him. However, he returned to his surprise and said, that was good, give me another. Right then, Bell knew he had a winner. With extended hours of operation, the stand was open from 9 a.m. to midnight, he was eventually able to average $150 every day during his first year. A few years later, Bell sold his first hot dog stand in 1952 and began to build an improved model. He introduced hamburgers along with hot dogs, which were staples of the rapidly developing fast food industry. The 1950s, Bell's experiment with tacos. Bell's successful beginnings in San Bernardino led him to identify a niche in the booming Mexican food industry. By the early 1950s, Bell had no choice but to incorporate other menu items along with his hot dogs and hamburgers in order to maintain its relevance in the area. It was then that he began to imitate the tacos found at local sit-down Mexican restaurants. To introduce tacos to mainstream America, he needed to make them easier to eat, so he invented the first fast food crunchy taco shell. Within a short time, the tacos were outselling hot dogs and hamburgers at the restaurant, and Bell decided it was time to create a new Mexican stand. As opposed to full-service restaurants, he decided to sell tacos by volume rather than make and stuff them individually. In 1954, Bell opened the first Taco Tia with a business partner. The following year, Bell began construction on three Taco Tia stands in San Bernardino, Redlands, and Riverside. About a year later, Bell completed his new stores and he generated $18,000 in sales in his first month. Taco Tia became a hit. But shortly after Bell married and had a family, he decided to move to Los Angeles. Bell sold his three Taco Tia restaurants in 1956 and recruited Ed Hackbarth to run them. The success left Bell itching for another challenge. So after selling previous locations, he wanted to start from scratch once again. However, a recessionary economic situation pushed up the construction costs. To reduce his startup risk, Bell formed a partnership with four members of the Los Angeles Rams professional football team. 1962, first Taco Bell. In 1962, Bell sold his shares in a successful restaurant chain so that he could remain independent. Glenn set out to take everything he'd learned from his experience as a chef and restaurateur and create a brand that served Mexican specialties. A friend suggested to Glenn that he should combine his name with his passion and call the new business Taco Bell. And with everything in place, 
Glenn opened his first Taco Bell outlet in Downey in 1962. It was a simple 20 by 20 foot Spanish building design. 1965, year of expansion and public offerings. Unlike Bell's previous ventures, Taco Bell was designed to be a nationwide fast food restaurant. However, a lack of managers was a major issue at that time. John Gorman, Taco Bell's first director of operations said, there weren't enough of them to go around and they were all men. Working with her aunt in a bakery taught Glenn Bell the value of working with women. So he started hiring women as managers. John stated Taco Bell was the first chain to hire women managers to run the stores. Bell's vision of creating a thriving chain started to take shape with the opening of eight more stores in the areas of Los Angeles, Long Bridge, and Paramount regions. It was during this period that franchising started to catch on, first with auto dealerships and then with restaurants. Bell quickly seized this idea. In 1964, Kermit Becky, a former Los Angeles police officer, acquired the first Taco Bell franchisee in the South Bay section of Hollywood. In no time, other franchise buyers followed. The late 70s, PepsiCo management. Taco Bell's success soon attracted PepsiCo Inc. By acquiring Taco Bell, PepsiCo wanted to acquire a market share in the Mexican food market, which Taco Bell dominated. A 1985 Bell advertising campaign exemplified the company's mainstream approach. Taco Bell's television ads claimed that its burger rivals offered the same ingredients as Taco Bell, beef, cheese, and tomatoes, but the company served up the ingredients in a more satisfying way. Bell's Just Made For You campaign reminded consumers that 60% of its products are custom-made, as well as that no dish is prepared until it is ordered to ensure freshness. The 1990s Expansion and Spin-Off Bell always wanted to open a Taco Bell in Mexico. In 1978, Bell had stated, I hope to establish a restaurant in a Mexican neighborhood in order to experiment with tacos. Finally, in 1992, he opened his first restaurant in Mexico, but he had to shut it down within two years as the Mexican people were so unwilling and unkind to Bell's pseudo-Mexican food. As of the late 1990s, PepsiCo merged its restaurants, which included Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC, into a single unit called Tricon Global Restaurants, Inc., which later changed its name to Yum Brands. Yum Brands, or stock ticker symbol Yum, controls Taco Bell today, making it the number one Mexican-inspired quick service restaurant brand in the United States. Currently, Taco Bell sells more than two billion tacos and a billion burritos each year at 5,600 locations in the US and around the world. In 2007, Taco Bell tried again to open shop in Mexico, but the same stumbling blocks remained. Taco Bell has tried twice to open up shop in the Mexican market, but failed miserably both times, and Bell's dream to open Taco Bell in Mexico never got fulfilled. Glenn Bell passed away on January 16, 2010 at Rancho Santa Fe, California. He was 86 years old. Glenn Bell led by example. His greatest achievements were popularizing and pioneering Mexican fast food restaurants, defeating the burger giants like McDonald's and Burger King in their attempts to convince American consumers to eat fast Mexican food, taught how to take lessons from your wins, failures, and experiments, and then the final message he conveyed was, innovation will make you stand out. So that's it for today, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please, feel free to add your comments. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for updates as there will be so much to look forward to. Until next time, thank you.